Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we're going to introduce you to five different project methodologies and when to use each. The five methodologies are Lean, DMAIC, DMADV, DFSS, and PMI. There's one prerequisite lesson, and that's the introduction to Lean and Six Sigma. We'll be reviewing again some of the concepts from that lesson, but you may find it helpful to view the other lessons before viewing this one. So, let's briefly review again the IPO model and the differences between efficiency and effectiveness. So if you remember from last time we said that nearly everything that we do can be modeled to the IPO flow model. So let's talk again about what that is. We use the example of the meat grinder where we said there was some input that goes into it. We apply some sort of process to it. And then from that process, we have some sort of output. So the process is transforming the inputs to create some sort of output. So as we compare, again, efficiency versus effectiveness based off of this IPO flow model, uh, we said that basically efficiency focuses on proving the process piece of this. And the question basically that we would ask from an efficiency standpoint is, can we produce the output in a faster time or with less effort or less cost using the same level of quality or accuracy? Now from an effectiveness standpoint, then the question we might ask in that case would be, can we produce that output at a higher level of quality or higher level of accuracy within the same amount of time or same level of effort or cost? In other words, the same level of efficiency. We use the illustration as well where we compare it here, where basically from an efficiency standpoint, we want to keep the same level of quality or accuracy, but we only want to focus on reducing the time or effort involved in the process. And likewise, for effectiveness, it's the same level of time or effort in the process, and we want to improve the quality or accuracy. Now, the distinctions that we have between effectiveness and efficiency are what's going to really help us as we explore the project methodologies. Of the five different project methodologies, how can we determine which method to use in which circumstance? Well, I built a decision tree that will help us determine which method may be the most ideal. So let's walk through that decision tree to find which project methodology may fit for our particular situation. So first we're going to start off by saying there's some problem or opportunity that we need to review. Based off of that we would ask, is there a known solution for that problem? Well if there is a known solution, we might move down to the path to say where we're going to apply some project management methodologies like through PMI basically to implement that solution. Now, if there is no known solution though, then what we might ask next is, is there a process or output that this is affecting? So if it's for a process, we'll move off to the left side where it's gonna point us to the efficiency path, again, which focuses on process, which focuses on the timeliness within that particular process. However, if it's for an output, then it's gonna point us to the path toward project opportunities that fall under effectiveness or those focusing on accuracy. But before we dive into each one of those, let's explore that a little bit further again on the process side. Where the next question we might ask is, is this for a new or existing process that we're focusing on? If it's for a new process, then we would use the Six Sigma methodology of DMADV, where there's a certain set of tools and methods that are used for helping to build a new process. Now, if it's for an existing process, then in that case, we would use the lean methodology and lean set of tools in order to help us improve that existing process. Now, from the output perspective, again, that's going to be pointing to the effectiveness and accuracy side of the methodologies. We would want to ask the same question, is this for a new or an existing output that we're focusing on? Well, if it's for a new output, something new that's being created, then we would use the Six Sigma methodology of DFSS, which stands for Design for Six Sigma. It's, again, another set of tools and methods that are helpful when you want to create a new output or something new using the Six Sigma methodology for creating that new output. However, for the most part, where we'd focus is for an existing output. And when there's an existing output, then we'd use a Six Sigma de methodology called DMAIC. And that's where we're going to spend most of our time digging through the DMAIC methodology, which actually accounts for probably at least 90 to 95% of most projects and opportunities. Now let's review that decision tree in a little bit more detail. I know I went through that drill down kind of quickly, so let's explore those five basic project methodologies again in a little bit more detail. The first one we talked about was project management. This is where, again, you have a known solution, so you would implement the PMI sets of tools in order to implement that known solution. The next ones we talked about were related to when there was not a known solution. 
So the very next one we talked about was the Six Sigma methodology called DMADV, which is a five-phase approach used toward creating or designing a new process. The next one was the lean sets of tools or methods that's used for fixing an existing process. So DMADV and lean are generally used for, for creating or improving the efficiency of a process. The next one we talked about was Six Sigma's methodology of DFSS, which stands for Design for Six Sigma. This methodology is used for creating or designing a new output that does not already exist. And the last one we talked about was the Six Sigma methodology of DMAIC, which is a five-phase approach that is used for fixing an existing or improving an existing output, again focusing more on the effectiveness side. So as you walk through the drill down, it's really important that you ask those critical questions that lead you to the right project methodology, one of these five. Now as you do that, one thing to consider is that not every project requires Lean or Six Sigma. You may find that as you explore the different methodologies, there are lots of tools or concepts that overlap between them. And as well, you might find that if you're working on a particular opportunity, you might expect to be using one particular methodology and have to change midstream to another one. That's not uncommon for that to happen. Now, as you explore these different project opportunities and trying to find the right project methodology, there's really two critical factors that need to be considered, and that's really where this drill down is based on. The first thing to consider is the root cause. Is the root cause or the solution that resolves the root cause, is that already known? Because if it is, then you just use the PMI sets of tools and methods to implement that solution. There's no need to go to advanced tools for Lean or Six Sigma if you already know what the solution is. Now if you don't know what the root cause is, you're not sure what it is, then you probably would want to use the Lean or Six Sigma tools or methods that would help you define what that root cause is and to fix the root cause. Now the next critical factor to consider is whether it's a process or an output that you're focusing on. Is the problem efficiency in the process or is the problem related to effectiveness of the output? So if it's related to the process, then you would use the Lean or Six Sigma tools and methods that help identify and fix the root cause in the process. But if it's related to the output, then you would just use the Six Sigma tools that are dedicated to finding and fixing that root cause. Now most projects will target opportunities for existing processes or outputs. Now this is pretty typical for most businesses unless you're in, in research and design or other types of industries where you do develop new products. Uh, generally most businesses are going to be using Lean or Six Sigma for their existing processes or existing outputs. So as a result most of the projects that will be worked on where there's no root cause that's known, they're going to be using Lean or the DMAIC methodology in order to find and fix the root cause or to fix the existing process. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. What I'd like you to do is to identify at least three prior projects or initiatives that you may have worked on and ask yourself these next sets of questions for each one of those. So the five different methodologies that we've reviewed, which one of those methodologies was applied for each of those projects or initiatives? And based on the decision tree that we looked at, was the correct methodology applied to each one of those projects or opportunities? If it wasn't, then which method was used and why was that one used? And was the outcome of the project affected by the methodology that was applied? Now, I want you to also identify one or more future potential project opportunities that are out there. And for each one of those, I want you to try to use that drill down and explore which one of those five methodologies you think should be applied and why that particular one should be applied. Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.